Good evening. This is the first 21st Century Watchmen's channel, and this is Lynette. It's about time. It's about time is a one-year chronological Bible study where we go through the entire Bible in chronological order to make sure that you can see the story and listen to the story and feel the story and read the story seamlessly. We're not jumping from one book to the other one. We're kind of making sure that the story fits. It's not Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus in that order. It's how it fits. We we did Genesis and interwove uh, Job in there. And then we came back into Genesis, making sure that the story fit, the timeline was right where it needed to be, and that everybody could understand it. So that's where we are, and that's what we're doing. All right, let's get into 1 Kings 12 chapters. Well, chapters 12 um, through 14. How about that? Rehoboam went to Shechem, for all Israel had come to Shechem to make him king. Now when Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, heard about it, he was living in Egypt, for he was still in Egypt where he had fled from King Solomon. So they sent word and called for him, and Jeroboam and all the assembly of Israel came and spoke to Rehoboam, saying, Your father made our yoke heavy, so now lighten the hard labor and the heavy yoke your father imposed on us, and we will serve you. Rehoboam replied to them, leave for three days, then come back to me. So the people left. King Rehoboam consulted with the elders who had served and advised his father Solomon while he was still alive and said, how do you advise me to answer this people? They spoke to him saying, if you will be a servant to this people today and will serve them and grant their requests and speak good words to them, then they will be your servants forever. But he ignored the advice which the elders gave him and consulted the young men who grew up with him and served him. He said to them, what do you advise that we answer this people who have said to me, lighten the yoke which your father put on us? The young men who had grown up with him answered, this is what you should say to this people who told you, your father made our yoke heavy, but as for you, make our yoke lighter. Say this to them, my little finger is thicker than my father's loins. And now... Whereas my father loaded you with a heavy yoke, I will add to your yoke. My father disciplined you with whips, but I will discipline you with scorpions. Taking the advice of young people that don't have any seasoning, they don't have the experience. Not that young people don't have good advice and they don't have wisdom, but come on, this is not right. Jeroboam and all the people came back to Rehoboam on the the third day, just as the king had instructed, saying, Return to me on the third day. The king answered the people harshly and ignored the advice which the elders had given him and spoke to them in accordance with the advice of the young men, saying, My father made your yoke heavy, but as for me, I will add to your yoke. My father disciplined you with whips, and I will discipline you with scorpions. So the king did not listen to the people, for the situation was from the Lord so that he might fulfill his word, which he had spoke through Ahijah the Shilonite to Jeroboam the son of Nebat. So when all Israel saw that the king did not listen to them, the people replied to the king saying, what portion do we have in David? We have no inheritance in the son of, of, of Jesse. To your tents, O Israel, now look now after your own house, David. Then Israel went back to their tents, but as for the sons of Israel who lived in the cities of Judah, Rehoboam reigned over them. Then King Rehoboam sent to Adoram, who was in charge of the forced labor, and all Israel stoned him to death. They killed him, and King Rehoboam quickly mounted his chariot to escape to Jerusalem. So Israel has rebelled against the house of David to this day. They are not together. They are not together. It came about when all Israel heard that Jeroboam had returned, that they sent word and called him to the assembly and made him king over all Israel. None followed the house of David except the tribe of Judah, including Benjamin. Benjamin had, was kind of put in with, these, uh, with Judah. Now, when Rehoboam arrived in Jerusalem, he assembled all the, the uh, house of Judah with the um, tribe of Benjamin. 180,000 chosen warriors to fight against the house of Israel to bring the kingdom back to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon. But the word of God came to uh, Shemaiah, the man of God, saying, Tell Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, king of Judah, and all the house 
of Judah and Benjamin and rest and the rest of the people. Thus says the Lord, you shall not go up and fight against your brothers, the sons of Israel. Let every man return to his house, for this thing has come about from me. So they listened to the word of the Lord and returned to go home in accordance with the word of the Lord. Well, at least they listened to the word of the Lord right there. Isn't that great? Then Jeroboam built Shechem as his royal city in the hill country of Ephraim and lived there. He went out from there and rebuilt Penuel as a stronghold. Remember, his, his, his father had his own city of strongholds, but he had to build there because he only had a little space, a little space in comparison to what he was, was, um, had been accustomed to. Jeroboam um, said in his heart, now the kingdom will return to the house of David. See, he was doubting what the Lord said. The Lord told him he was giving him those 10 tribes and he was doubting. And so here's where it goes. If these people go up to the house of the Lord in Jerusalem to offer sacrifices, then their heart will turn to their, to their Lord, to Rehoboam, king of Judah. And they will kill me and return to Rehoboam, king of Judah. So the king took counsel, you know, and made two calves of gold. This is the beginning of the end. Do you know what happened back in the day, back in Moses' day when they built those two calves? God was not having it. So, and he said to the people, it is too much for you to go all the way up to Jerusalem. Behold, your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. What a mess. How are we going to play a God like that? These are the gods. He set the, gold, the one golden calf in Bethel and the other he put in Dan. Now this thing became a sin because the people went to worship before the one as far as Dan or the other one of them as far as Dan. And Jeroboam also made houses on high places and he made priests from all people who were not of the sons of Levi. Come on now. We're just getting just arbitrary priests. Jeroboam held a feast on the 15th day of the month like the feast which is kept in Judah. And he went up to the altar. He did this in Bethel, sacrificing to the calves which he had made. And he stationed in Bethel the priests of the high places which he had made. So he went up to the altar which he had made in Bethel on the 15th day of the eighth month, in the month which he had devised in his own heart, in defiance of God's commandment, it says. And he held a feast for the Israelites. And he went up to the altar to burn incense in defiance of God's law. He was doing way too much, right? And that's chapter 13. So we've got Jeroboam doing too much. He had been given 10 tribes, got tore it from um, David's house and gave it to him and he messed it up. Now behold, in chapter 13, there came a man of God from Judah to Bethel by the word of the Lord, which while Jeroboam was standing by the altar, to burn incense. The man cried out against the idolatrous altar by the word of the Lord. O altar, altar, thus says the Lord, behold, a son shall be born to the house of David, Josiah by name. And on you shall he sacrifice the bodies of the, bodies of the priests of the high places who burn incense on you, and human bones shall be burned on you. And he gave a sign the same day saying, this is the sign which the Lord has spoken. Behold, the altar shall be split apart and the ashes that are on it shall be poured out. When the king heard the words which the man of God cried out against the altar in Bethel, Jeroboam put out his hand from the altar saying, Seize him. And his hand which he had put out against, the, against him withered so that he was unable to pull it back to himself. The altar was split apart and the ashes were poured out from the altar in accordance with the sign which the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. Well, what else do they expect to happen? He's going, if God said it, that's what's going to happen. The king answered and said to the man of God, please entreat the Lord your God and pray for me. Now he's the Lord your God. I guess he is because you got some calves over there. That my, my hand may be restored to me. So the man of God entreated the Lord and the king's hand was restored to him and became as it was before. And the king said to the man of God, Come home with me and refresh yourself. I will give you a reward. But the man of God said to the king, Even if you were to give me half your house, I would not go with you. Nor would I eat, your, eat bread or drink water in this place. For I was commanded by the word of the Lord, 
You shall not eat bread or drink water, nor shall you return by the way you came. So he went another way and did not return by the way that he came to Bethel. Now there was an old prophet living in Bethel, and his sons came and told him everything that the man of God had done that day in Bethel. They also told their father the words which he had spoken to the king. Their father asked them, which way did he go? For his sons had seen which way the man of God who came from Judah had gone. He said to his sons, saddle the donkey for me. So they saddled the donkey for him and he rode away on it and he went after the man of God. He, and he found him sitting under an, um, an oak tree and he said to him, are you the man of God who came from Judah? And he said, I am. Then he said to him, come home with me and eat bread. He said, I cannot return with you or nor go with go in with you, nor will I eat bread or drink water with you in this place. For I was told by the word of the Lord, you shall not eat bread nor drink water there, nor shall you return by going the way that you came. He answered him, I too am a prophet as you are. And an angel spoke to me by the word of the Lord saying, bring him back with you to your house so that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied to him. Listen, if the Lord told you something, no matter what he tells somebody else, supposedly, don't you go with what the Lord told you. You got to do what thus says the Lord. You got to have, that's why you have to know the Lord for yourself. You know the Lord. You have to really dwell in this word and get to know how the Lord is dealing. Because just because somebody says they heard from the Lord and they're supposed to be a prophet. There are too many false prophets out here. There are too many people that have a word. That, that has nothing to do with you. And this man clearly lied. The Lord does not con contradict himself. He does not do that. He's not going to give you a double-sided word. This is not okay. Anyway, so it says, So the man of God went back with him and ate bread in his house and drank water. Because the man told him an angel came to him. Now, th does it, an angel does not trump the Lord. So you got a lower-ranking official, if you will, telling you, to, to go in and eat with them. Come on now. That's not okay. Now it happened as they were sitting at the, the table that the word of the Lord came to the prophet who had brought him back. And he cried out to the man of God who had come from Judah. Thus says the Lord, because you have disobeyed the word of the Lord and have not kept the commandment which the Lord your God commanded you, but have come back and have eaten bread and drunk water in the place of which the Lord said to you, you shall not eat bread nor drink water. Your body shall not come to the tomb of your fathers. After the prophet of the house had eaten bread and after he had drunk, he saddled the donkey for the prophet whom he had brought back. Wow. Now when he had gone, a lion met him by the road and killed him. And his body was thrown in the road and the donkey st standing beside it. The lion was also standing beside the body. And there were men passing by and they saw the body thrown in the road and the lion standing beside the body. So they came and told about it in the city where the old prophet lived. When the prophet who had brought him back from the road heard about it, he said, it is the man of God who was disobedient to the word of the Lord. How come he didn't say it was the man of God who, was, who I tricked? The man of God who I lied to. It's the man of the God who was disobedient. It's the man of God who was disobedient. How you gonna play him? All right, I'm just gonna say it's just it was wrong. That's wrong. He wrong for that. That's that's just how I'm gonna leave it. Therefore, the Lord has given him to the lion, which has torn him and killed him, in accordance with the word of the Lord, which he had spoke to him. And he said to his son, "Saddle the donkey for me." And they saddled it, and he went out and found the body thrown on the road, and the donkey and the lion standing beside the body. The lion had not eaten the body or attacked the donkey. Then the prophet picked up the body of the man of God and laid it on the donkey and brought it back. And he came into the city of the old prophet to mourn and to bury him. And he laid the body in his own grave and they mourned over him saying, Alas, my brother. Then after he had buried him, he said to his sons, When I am dead, bury me in the grave in which the man of God is buried. Lay my bones beside his bones. For the words which he cried out by the word of the Lord against the altar in Bethel and against all the houses of the high places which are in the, the city of Samaria shall cer certainly come to pass. Wow, I want to be next to the prophet, you know, and so I want you to lay my, my body next to his. Was this, this, was this the whole reason for the season? This man was tricked. He, was, he wasn't discerning. How unfortunate. We've got to stay on our game. We've got to stay steady, ready, and everything else. 
After this event, Jeroboam did not turn away from his evil way, but again made priests for the high places from among all the people. He ordained anyone who was willing so that there would be priests for the high places. And this thing became the sin of the house of Jeroboam to blot it out and eliminate it from the face of the earth. Wow. First Kings 14, we're there now. At that time, Abijah, the son um, of Jeroboam, became sick. Jeroboam said to his wife, please get up and disguise yourself so that people will not know that you are Jeroboam's wife and go to Shiloh. Ahijah, the prophet, is there, the one who told me that I would be king over the people. Take with you 10 loaves of bread, some cakes, and a bottle of honey and go to him. He will tell you what will happen to the boy. Jeroboam's wife did so. She got up and went to Shiloh and came to the house of, ha of Ahijah. Now Ahijah could not see because his eyes were dim from old age. And the Lord said to Ahijah, Behold, the wife of Jeroboam is coming to inquire of you about her son because he is sick. You shall lay such and such to her. You, you shall say such and such to her. But when she arrives, she will pretend to be another woman. So here's a, a, another key point. God does not stop talking to you, no matter how old you get. He, if, if you have, if you are sold out, God will have a word for you all the time. You have to be ready to listen. This man was sitting there blind, basically, and he was just, but because he was available, no matter what your state, no matter how sick, no matter how seemingly incapacitated you are, the Lord still has a word for you. That's what I'm going to say to that. So when Ahijah heard the sound of her feet as she came in the doorway, um, he said, come in, wife of Jeroboam. Why do you pretend to be another woman? For I have been sent to you um, with a harsh, you know, by God with a harsh message. Go to tell Jeroboam, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, because I exalted you from the, among the people and made you leader over my people Israel and tore the kingdom away from the house of David and gave it to you. But you have not been like my servant David, who kept my commandments and followed me with all his heart to do only what was right in my eyes, but have done more evil than all the kings who were before you. For you have gone and made for yourself other gods and molten images to provoke me to anger and have cast me behind your back. Therefore, behold, I am bringing evil on the house of Jeroboam. I will cut off the from Jeroboam, every male, both bond and free, so both the slave and the, the, and the free one in Israel. And I will utterly sweep away the house of Jeroboam as one sweeps away dung until it's all gone. Oh my, not, not dung, not, not waste, not human waste. Oh my, my. The dogs will eat anyone belonging to Jeroboam who, die, who dies in the city, and the birds of the sky will eat anyone who dies in the field for the Lord has spoken it. Now as for you, arise, go to your own house. When your feet enter the city, the child whose name is Abijah will die. All Israel shall mourn for him and bury him for he alone of Jeroboam's family will come to um, the grave because, because in him there was found something good and pleasing toward the Lord, the God of Israel in the house of Jeroboam. Now even with some, God's word is his word. None of your people are going to live to, to um, deal with that. None of your people are going to be on the throne. None of them. Because you messed up. The sins of the father who shall revisit the sons. That's the word. We've got to be careful about the sin and, and that our committed or our commitment to sin because it affects the generations following us. We're, we're not living in isolation. We are our brothers and our kids keepers. We are. Legacy. We need to have a legacy of, of holiness to pass on, still going on. Moreover, the Lord will raise up for himself a king over Israel who will cut off the house of Jeroboam this day from now on. The Lord will strike Israel as a reed is shaken in the water, and he will up, uproot Israel from this good land which he, had, he gave to their fathers, and he will scatter them beyond the, the river because they have made their ashram provoking the Lord to anger. All those asterisk um, poles, that's inappropriate. He will give up Israel because of the sins of Jeroboam, which he, had, which he has committed, and with which he has made Israel. <sighs> Sin. So er, Jeroboam's wife arose and left and came to Terza, um, which was the king's residence. And as she was entering the threshold of the house, 
the child died. And all Israel buried him and mourned for him in accordance with the word of the Lord, which he spoke through his servant of Ahijah, the prophet. Now as for the rest of the acts of Jeroboam, how he made war and how he reigned, behold, they are written in the book of Chronicles of the kings of Israel. The time that Jeroboam reigned was 22 years, and he slept with his fathers, and Nadab his son reigned in his place. Now Rehoboam the son of Solomon reigned in Judah. Rehoboam was 41 years old when he became king, and he reigned 17 years in Jerusalem, the city the Lord had chosen from all the tribes of Israel in which to put his name. His mother's name was Namah, um, the Ammonites, and the people of Judah did evil in the sight of the Lord. They provoked him to jealousy. She was an Ammonites, and so remember, if you, if you don't um, recall, the other day we talked about the fact that um, Solomon made, uh, erected shrines to Nehemiah's God and also the uh, princess of of Egypt and all of his wives. He erected gods. And so there we go. Not surprising. And so it's, they provoked him to jealousy more than all their fathers had done with their sins, which they had committed. For they also built for themselves high places. So Judah was doing it as well as Israel to worship idols and sacred pillars. Now they were, they were even more blasphemous because of the fact that God was there. They had a, they had this, you know, the city, the temple was there where they are, or they were, and, and they built idols there too. And so God's not going to share his space. That's just inappropriate. All right. These were on every high hill, not, not some high hill, on every high hill under every luxuriant tree. They, they were also made uh, male cult prostitutes in the land. They co committed all the repulsive acts of the nations which the Lord dispossessed before the Israelites. Man. Now in the fifth year of Rehoboam, Shishak, king of Egypt, um, which was Jeroboam's brother-in-law, came up against Jerusalem. He took away the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house. He took every, away everything. He even took all the shields of gold which Solomon had made. So King Rehoboam made bronze shields to replace them and handed them over to the captains of the palace guard who guarded the doorway to, of the king's house. And as often as the king went into the house of the Lord, the guards would carry them and bring, back, bring them back into the guard room. Now as for the rest of the acts of Rehoboam and everything that he did, and the, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? There, there was also war between Rehoboam and Jeroboam continually. And Rehoboam slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David. His mother's name was Namah, the Ammonites. Abijah, his son, became king in this place. Interesting. Here we are. That's the end. A very, very sad story. We have the, you know, Jeroboam being given the kingdom and he lost it because of his disobedience and his, and his desire and his um, pride of life, not thinking that, you know, God's word wasn't true, not being obedient to God's word. Um, we have the same thing happening with um, Rehoboam, um, not being obedient to God's word. And then we have the, the, uh, the man of God who was not being obedient to God's word and he, and he was killed. It's unfortunate that we can do part of God's word, but we can't carry it through. Let this be a lesson that we must carry the word all the way out. This way is not the right way. It's just not going to work. All right. If you, um, this word resonates to you, resonates with you, and you feel the way I feel right now, really repentant, make concerned about whether or not I'm obeying all of the word and not just doing partial um, parts of it. That's I, I, you know, I want to make sure that I'm right with the Lord, and so I encourage you to say this part, this prayer with me, so that we can be right with the Lord and we can we can dwell like we're supposed to, and there's no disobedience, and we can cut off this these lines and this this uh, ties you know, of disobedience. How about that? God wants you in the right relationship with him. Let's do this. Father, it is written in your word that if I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in my heart that you have raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. Therefore, Father, I confess that Jesus is my Lord. I make him Lord of my life right now. I believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead. I renounce my past life with Satan and close the door to any of his vices. I thank you for forgiving me of all my sins. Jesus is my Lord, and I am a new creation. Old things have passed away. 
Now all things become new in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer with me, you are a part of the kingdom and a kingdom and the, the kingdom family. And God bless you. Put your name in the chat and we will get back with you and rejoice with you. And if you have said this prayer along with me and you do not have a church home in your local area, put your name in the chat as well as your city and your state. And we and we will direct you to a church home that will love on you, give you, um, will disciple you and give you the tools needed for you to become the um, child of God that you're supposed to be and live in your purpose and walk in your purpose. God bless you. Have a great rest of your evening.